Welcome to another show of Kenya Explained. My name is Esther Nyonje. It's been a long time coming, but here we are once again. Now, it started as a promising relationship between UDP and TNA to birth Jubilee. President Uhuru Kenyatta and his deputy, Samoy William Ruto, had to face hurdles like the ICC case and the Supreme Court verdicts that threatened their presidential bid, but still they overcame. Now, with matching suit and ties and matching optimism, optimism, they promised to take Kenya to the next level under the Jubilee administration. And President Uhuru Kenyatta promised William Samuel Ruto to support him after his 10 years are done. 10 years down the line, see what happened. Like a wife and husband, fighting in court to file divorce, they cannot see each other eye to eye, fighting cold wars, one accusing one of sabotage, the other accusing the other of betrayal. In his recent presidential debate, Mr. William Samuel Ruto cited that he could not perform some functions. His power is limited because the back does not stop with him. To tackle this issue about the, the deputy president, his office, and his power, I'm joined once again by Kenya's most sought political analyst, Professor Herman Bond Manyora. Welcome to the show, sir, once again. Thank you, Esther. Good to see you, fit Good to and see healthy. you too. It's been a long time. Wonderful. Finding you has been quite hectic, but thank God no, you're yeah, here yeah. once again. We are again. serving Kenyans. Good. Yeah. So, straight into it. So what are the functions of a deputy president as per the 2010 constitution? The 2010 constitution designates the, de the deputy pres president as a principal assistant to the president. And more or less stops there. To suggest therefore that uh, there are no clear roles. You'll only do that which the president has told you. That would include advising him. But the constitution was careful not to put down any functions. Basically, what I have been telling people, a deputy president is like an heir to the throne, Prince Charles, if you wish, in the UK, whose only function is to wait. Mm -hmm. So at the deputy president, the deputy governor, and Kenyans must understand this thing. Mm. A deputy president, a deputy governor, is like an heir to the throne. You wait for the king to die. Then you take over. And then you take in over. In the case they don't die, you... You serve them until they finish their term and hope they will support you. Mm. And you, you, you now start your own and look for your own spare wheel. So does that mean that the deputy president does not have any administrative functions? No, none. none. He cannot sign any contract? No, he nothing. cannot do anything? Nothing. And yes. The only one now, our, we gave him under an act of parliament, I think. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I think it's an act of parliament. Uh, I beg. I don't know that it is a constitution or an act of parliament. Where he chairs that. Yes. Uh, this, that brings together county governments and, uh, and the national government. Okay. Beyond that, there's nothing else. And even that, I think, is an act of parliament. I'm not quite sure, but I think it's an act of parliament. And so, if you say his function, his core function is to wait, yes. then why, why, is, why is it everywhere that people are blaming the deputy president for the high cost of living? Why are they blaming him for insecurity in the country? Why are they blaming him about corruption, embezzlement, mismanagement? Well, you say that his function is to wait. So what is he supposed to do? But you see, the problem is there are two reasons for that. One, the impression they gave us, not even the impression, the picture they presented to us from day one with the matching ties and folded white shirts and everything, is that there are those core presidents. It's not provided for in the Constitution, but nothing stops a president working hand in hand with the deputy. There's nothing. The Constitution doesn't prescribe any role for the Deputy President, but you can choose. Raila has said he would want Mother Karua to, to handle a, a cabinet po portfolio, justice and constitutional affairs. So nothing stops you as a President working with. So we saw them, they were working together. Beyond that, he himself, William Samoy Ruto, has told us he was the one who was running government in the first term. Did he say that? He has said that. He has said, he, has said he single handedly. In his office in Karen, did the, 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 the designs and whatever for the roads, did the designs whatever for 
last mile in his Haram House office, Annex. He has said it. He has left no doubt whatsoever. Indeed and word that he was the one who was running government. How can he run government? That's what he has told us. He has said, and in fact, recently, uh, Gashagwa said uh, in the debate, not, not, not even a public rally, in, a, in the debate that was watched by more than 30 million Kenyans, or people, I think, that uh, the president uh, was suffering from inferiority complex, which but traces what they have been telling us, that it is root of running government. They, he has said the president could not stand a strong deputy. All those put together, and a few other things that he has said, including the, 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 the day he says he almost slapped him, of course, in jest, what he found the president doing. When you tie all those things together, then the conclusion, not even through inference, the obvious fact and stated, is that Ruto was running government in the first time. And you can also add that since I left, nothing is going on. So that means you are the one running government, and therefore you can be blamed. Just as you want to take credit for the good things, you must equally take credit for the wrong things. That's true. So the, the, the blame is justified. You have invited it yourself. If you said, well, gentlemen, government achieved things. I was advising my president. We did some things right. Some things we got wrong as nobody is an angel. No government, no individual is an angel. But my role was simply advisal. Then nobody will ask you for anything. But when you say you are the one running government, we will now take you to task mm. over the corruption in the first term. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and over many other things, insecurity mm. and all that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But in my mind, I'm thinking uh, when you say about running government, for example, if there is a project that has to be approved, he cannot put his signature to authorize the project. That is the work of the president. Yes. And so if he's talking about, uh, if we have to blame him about insecurity or the, price, the prices of commodities, basic commodities in Kenya, we have cabinet secretaries in those sectors. And there is the principle of separation of powers. So how can you say that he's been running government and we, we have to blame him for corruption and we have to blame him for embezzlement when we have the people in charge of this issue? Two, two reasons. One, like I've said before, he says he was running government. Even when the president runs government, he doesn't sign everything. Those okay. things are signed by line ministers and other people, not, mm. the, not the president. In fact, there are very few places where the president signs on anything. Secondly, if you look at the structure of this government in 2013, it was more or less 50-50. Okay. And uh, <coughs> where Ruto appointed his 50, Uhuru appointed his 50. It goes without saying also that one, a majority, if not all, of his appointees were from his tribe, the Kalenjin. And they were heading crucial ministries. And number two, it is in those ministries that we had the most corruption, like energy, for example, and like terror. So he can't escape it. But it was his. So we know, not, because not we live Ruto. in this country, yes. we know that uh, if it is Ruto who brought Keter. Okay, we have to blame you. Uh, you can see the mess in the energy sector. We mm. can also know. Because Uhuru brought Masharia in the infrastructure, all this mess we are seeing. We know it is Uhuru's appointee there, and they could be talking together. And, uh, you know, there is, uh, you know, Tunaonga, you know, yeah, so we know. You cannot imagine that a minister can, can do that kind of corruption without some top protection. We know that. So it's, we are blaming Ruto for what is right. Okay. Uh, although I, as a person, I don't like the blame route. Okay. Whenever we have a problem, I prefer we look at that problem and address the problem. Mm. Look at the challenges. Instead of blame. Blaming is very easy. Very easy. Very easy. But you see, it is they who are inviting blame. Because they are saying all these things is handshake, is BBI. So now, we invite them and table certain things. and say, now how about this? If you say that there is hunger in this country and you are going to revitalize agriculture and do all the beautiful things, why didn't you do them when they had the power in the first time? Mm. How would you use money on roads on last mile which you are celebrating? Why didn't you do a fertilizer plant when you have the plant? In any case, that's what would have been the first thing you did because you come from the North Rift, the food basket of this country, and those are your people. Why didn't, they, why didn't you give them a fertilizer plant? So today you'll be telling us, you know I did a fertilizer plant when I was running government, or at least when I was 
a functional DP. Mm -hmm. what, what, what has Uhuru done and Raila Wamenda wame ngoa yu fertilizer plant? Wame piga waka yueka chini. Yeah, that, that's it. So, you invite blame yourself if you are Ruto. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's clear enough. So, isn't William Samuel Ruto justified to pursue his own interests? Because I feel that the, in the first place, he was in synchrony with his boss. Yes. And then the BBI thing came in, uh, Raila Molo Dinga came in, yes. and Ruto felt sidelined, not only feeling, but he was sidelined. So if this is the case, if that was done to me, I would pursue my own interest. So why is it that uh, people are looking at him as a bad person for pursuing his own interest? Because in the beginning, this was our agreement, and then you do me this at this time, and when I do it, you want to say that I'm a bad person. I'm, yeah. the, I'm the enemy to the country. It is perfectly in order for you to, to pursue your own things. F follow your dreams. Be ambitious. Follow through with your ambitions. Want to be president. Perfectly in order. Except that it's also perfectly in order for the other people to demonize that, their opponent. So everything is perfectly in order. Perfectly in order for Ruto to pursue his dreams. Perfectly in order for the other people to attack him. It's politics. Fair game. It's politics. Fair game, yes. Okay. And now we would not like to see another scenario of what is happening between the DP and uh, a president in future. Yes. Uh, so how, 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 how can we go about that? That we don't see an occurrence of this? Because Kenyans have failed to understand and to interpret the constitution properly. They have come to believe that the, a DP is elected. When the truth is, is not elected. Mm. That's a very simple provision. In the last constitutional order, when a president left office, office before his end of his term, midstream, death, or impeachment, whatever it is, resignation, we said for 90 days, the vice president will act and then an election will be held within those 90 days. People said that could be very challenging. A lot of games and intrigue could take place and you could throw the country into a mess. So what do we do? And even to save the country and necessary costs. What do we do? We have a deputy president taking over. So how do we know if something happened to the president at the time it is happening to him, there will be a right deputy president whom we can trust. So we told him, we want to elect you president. Point at somebody, show us somebody, and tell us, if something happened to me, because I'm a human being, I can die in office. Mm -hmm. So now he said, because you can play games with us, because we now believe this guy is good, we vote for you. After a few months, you kick him out. We shall deny you that power to kick him out. Mm -hmm. But now, because we have misinterpreted that constitution, we think he's a co-president. Okay. So the only way I have a proposal, which is, if you get to a point where you can no longer work with your deputy president mm. in the interest of the government, mm -hmm. because we shall agree that when a deputy is pulling the other side the, 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 and the president, you can't develop. Mm. Part of the challenges we have are from that. Uh, when a proper analysis is done and made, you'll see that part of the issues we have today have to do with Ruto being pulling in the opposite direction with Uhuru Kenyatta. So when you get to that point, instead of making the country suffer, Instead of humbling the movement, the working of government, we can allow you to remove the deputy president. Okay. So you go to cabinet, mm. and with cabinet approval, you dismiss him. Okay. And then you come up with another name. Mm. Cabinet approves that name. Once cabinet agrees with you, you then nominate him and take him to the National Assembly mm. for approval. Okay. That, that can save the people of Kenya. But this idea of somebody can't be removed with this poor understanding of the arrangement, of the architecture, we will get ourselves into problems. Mm. This could just be a tip of the iceberg. You never know what we could do in the future. Okay. Yeah. So I think we, we need to really look at it mm -hmm. because we have, we have failed to understand it. And in case Azimio carries the day, how is Martha Karua going to carry out her function as uh, Minister of Justice and Constitution and DP? How is that going to be efficient in the office? Yeah, people are questioning that. People are questioning, does the Constitution allow a Deputy President to be a Cabinet uh, Minister? I've gone through the constitutions, and uh, as a layman, I think I don't see anywhere where it's 
not possible. Mm. So she will do her job. Okay. As a deputy, in any case, you can borrow from counties. Many deputy governors are also CCs, you know, those kind of ministers down there. And mm. it works perfectly well. Mm -hmm. So she'll do her job well. Mm -hmm. I thought you were asking me how they will work together. Could they reach where root? And uh, she has been very clear. Mother Karu has a history and a record. If she can't take it, she and it can't be solved in, the, in private, she will just walk out. <laughs> but she has said people always should be prepared for differences. Yeah. And those differences, when they arise, as indeed they will arise, mm. we will sort out in private. She stops there. But I know she's saying, if they get to a point where we can't resolve them in the public, I think I'll just leave. And I, I don't think Raila and Ruth and um, Mother could come to work together without talking about that issue. They must have talked about it. That we are in Mukali. We have had our own differences in the past. They must have discussed and agreed to work in a certain way. And that is good for the country. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much, Prof, for your insight. We have come to the end of this show. And thank you so much for continuing to subscribe and showing your support to this channel. So until next time, see you.